Yo, what is up guys? So for today, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2. Now specifically, we're going to be looking at the this week's TWAB. And it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to skip the Vault of Glass discussion, mostly because it doesn't bring anything new to the table. But I will have the date in the screen right now. This is when it's up. So you have your time. Make sure you grind. And all you have to be is minimum of 1300 tree to even get in there. So that's cool. But... We're not going to talk about the Vault of Glass that much, just that literally is it. And they talk about heavy weapons and like the roles that they want heavy weapons to have. So like the first one's Ad Clear, which is pretty self-explanatory. Single tar target damage, which again is self-explanatory. Burst damage, which essentially can mean either like take a boss down really fast or take a champion down really fast. So they also talk about like how weapons map to roll, so sword. Ammo efficient ad cleared, single target sustained damage, secondary burst damage at the cost of being next to a, a dangerous target. Rocket launcher, burst damage and secondary ad clear. Machine gun, ammo efficient ad clear, secondary single target sustained damage. We expect to adjust the machine guns in the future season. They're not currently hitting this target, which is perfect because they're not. And then linear fusion rifle, single target sustained damage, which is hilarious where the target has a handy crit spot, secondary burst damage. Drum grenade launchers burst ad clear, secondary single da target damage, and exotic snipers is single target sustained damage. A few examples of how we've used heavy weapons in playtest of high difficulty content and or when we've played Grandmaster Nightfalls in retail, linear fusion rifles burning down champions, boss damage where the boss has a crit spot or with divinity. Rocket launcher, Burst damage against champions or bosses, particularly with lasting impression, clearing clumped up waves of tough ads. Machine gun breaking, matching shield in GMs where our other weapons can do the trick using a machine gun instead of a primary weapon in a heavy ammo rich situation where your primary and special weapon are not rapid fire. Exe example, the Monarch and Succession or whatever machine gun has a useful damage type in, the, in this GM. <clears throat> not only that they go through their balance philosophy which is okay like it's basically it talks about they want to make a big i don't know it's just read it i'm here just to tell you about the changes that are upcoming because their balance philosophy is all the fuck everywhere basically it's like i don't even want i don't even care so let's talk about the changes that are coming in the next season Precision 450 RPM auto rifles. This subfamily fell behind other auto rifles in the auto rifle tuning last year. So damage has been increased to be closer to the time to kill of the others. Increased precision auto rifle damage per bullet from 17 to 18. We'll see how that goes. This also doesn't explain if it's like body or headshot, but whatever. Rares, I'm gonna just simplify this basically the new rare machine gun and the bow that they added they didn't have any place to obtain it so they're adding it to the loot pool which what the fuck ever I, I don't think this should have been here but okay linear fusion rifles uh i'm gonna skip all of this because you guys already know how most of you guys feel about li linear fusion rifles they're hot dog shit like con like i'm not even kidding like they're really bad so to counteract that, they're increasing the precision damage by 15% and increased reserve ammo by 20%. So, <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with this. Mostly because linear fusion rifles are dog shit and we keep getting one like almost every season for some retarded reason. I'm not even kidding. Like, we got one this season, we got one last season, and we got one, I think, season of the right? No, season of what's it called? Dawn. We have way too many linear fusion rifles. They act like they're the main character of this show, but they're not. So hopefully this this change actually pushes people to use a linear fusion rifle because I currently farmed. Thank God I farmed this because I, I just wanted it just to have it to replace my the linear fusion rifle from season of Dawn. But Threaded Needle, the, the linear fusion rifle from this season, can actually get a uh, rapid hit and Vorpal weapon. So, if the fifteen percent stack, which it should stack with Vorpal weapon, then my Vorpal, then my threaded needle is already gonna be meta. Hopefully, on top of a reserve ammo 
upcrease to 20%. This shit should be really good. Hopefully it is. I'm I'm hoping because I do enjoy linear fusion rifles. Like I said, the season of Dawn one was like my favorite for like a while. And the only reason I like erased it was because it's sunset. So I'm really happy that I farmed my way to get a rapid hit Vorpal weapon one. Which again, I'm really happy I did that because I just did not have the drive to do that but i got it so hopefully linear fusion rifles are better and not like the piece of shit that everyone thinks it well it, it's not think they are pieces of shit not only that but they also talk about the how we've been saying that linear fusion rifles should just go into the secondary slot which i think would be good good because it would just open up more things for them <clears throat> But they explained that they don't want to do that because it would fuck up with the PvP landscape and just other things, which is fair. But with this buff, hopefully, hopefully everyone's like, okay, cool, this is good. And then fusion rifles, the recent buff to fusion rifle ranges had the side effect of making the best self family for PvP high impact even better. So we've decided to bring low range stat fusion rifles up a fair bit, increase damage fall off, start distance for for fusion rifles no effect on 100 range stat plus okay <laughs> uh the the ones that i really wanted to talk about is perks we're getting perk changes which i think is really interesting because we're getting a few where i'm just like yo this is wild so subsistence when we made this perk we were experimenting with unusual downsides for powerful perks but ultimately decided that reducing reserves wasn't an interesting trade-off we also wanted to be able to put the perk on special and heavy weapons where reducing reserves would feel terrible which is valid yes it would feel fucking terrible Submachine guns were grant granting a much smaller magazine fraction than auto rifles so we fixed that at the same time. No longer reduces reserve ammunition. Thank God, this is gonna open up subsistence. A lot more people are actually gonna wanna use this now. Some machine guns now receive the same ammo fraction per takedown that auto rifles do. Was 10% like most weapons, now 17 as, same as auto rifles. This should, this should increase the usage within submachine guns if it's a good enough like percentage because most of the time you're not getting any, like anything back at all and you're like sacrificing a much better perk for subsistence. Hopefully these changes bring up subsistence because I like the perk. I just don't like that it like fucks up your ammo e economy and and most of the time it's kind of not worth it like with for certain weapons. But I think submachine guns just need a buff in general to like combat pretty much everything else but that's just my opinion on that high impact reserves and under pressure due to technical constraints at the time these were created the trigger condition for these is on projectile impact what the bonus what the what the bonus won't take effect until you fire the weapon once but we have more flexibility and perk activators now these are now active as long as their conditions are met what i'm confused like oh are you are, are they saying that like if you met whatever uh when i first read this i took it as can can i can i use this with like uh overload now not overload what is that that one perk called the the one that over overflow can i use this with overflow and it actually like activates probably not it's probably just saying that if you spawn in with like i don't know three ammo like if you if you spawn in with half of your ammo capacity you probably don't have to shoot to activate it is probably what they're saying which is a weird change i would have much preferred if like they were like yeah now it activates with other like increasing mag size uh perks like overflow ambitious assassin like etc like it would be really cool if they did that but probably not which unfortunate unrelenting this was a hard this was hard to trigger in difficult content and the health awarded was hard to perceive. Now easier to trigger in PVE, immediate trigger on majors and heals 20% more. I think online is still gonna be hot dog shit, but I mean, if you guys wanna like live in that dream, then be it. I'm not gonna say you guys are like, you know, living in a fantasy world. Sympathetic Arsenal isn't appealing enough for many players as it is. 
but is useful in niche situations. So we decided on a small buff to sweeten it, sweeten it a little. Now grants plus 20 reload in addition to its primary effect. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I care enough for that, to be honest. Like, it's just sympathetic arsenal is such a like niche perk, like already, and adding 20 per, 20 reload plus 20 reload is just kind of like. I mean, like, I guess, sure. I don't know. Um, I don't know, dude. I still wouldn't use sympathetic arsenal. It's just such a weird. I guess you could play into it. Just still weird. Dragonfly, it always bugged us that Dragonfly wouldn't proc on every enemy you could finish with a precision hit. Now works on heavy shanks and servitors and occurs even faster than after the season of the chosen fix. Okay, but like those enemies don't have like crits though, that's why. Oh, they should. I personally think they should have crits, but well, servitors have crits. I don't know about shanks. Shanks, I've never seen a crit, so. Hit fire grip. We're being careful not to overbuff this since when hit fire is too effective, it changes the game significantly. So we're just bumping this a bit more over the season of arrivals buff to make it a more useful option. Plus one, plus one degrees precision hip fire angle threshold, and what is that? One and a half? I don't know. Reticle sticking this fall off distance. One degree doesn't seem like that much, but for reference, hand cannon aim assist cone angle is 2.5 degrees at zero aim assist to three degrees at zero or 100 aim assist. And you can feel the difference between a 90 aim assist hand cannon and a 100 aim assist hand cannon. So a small difference can be significant. No, that precision hit fire angle caps at the aim down sights aim down sights aim assist cone angle god fuck that was hard to say iron grip iron gaze and iron reach we were cautious when making stat bump perks in season of arrivals not wanting to break weapon stat ranges at too low a cost but the penalties these shipped with were too much now that we've seen them in the wild for sure a lot of these were just way too much like you like for what you gained you really we're losing way too much like in my opinion so decreasing it is going to be is going to make them a lot more viable mostly because people are going to be like ah 30 i honestly if it was 20 i would immediately go fucking buck wild but we'll see we'll see they want to do it like slowly to see if it's better so hopefully 30 is enough because dude some sometimes it's just too much so this is a good change i think Osmosis and elemental capacitor. We didn't have time to address these when stasis came into being, but always wanted them to work correctly when playing a stasis subclass. Osmosis now switches the weapon to stasis damage when playing a stasis subclass. This should work for any mechanics that ask for stasis damage, but not for stasis ability damage. Also created stasis uh, special effects. I think that says <clears throat> for all weapon types that osmosis can appear on more coming later elemental capacitor with a stasis subclass grants a recoil direction and reduces aim down sight move speed penalty <laughs> oh dude it it's gonna that one's gonna piss people off probably because like ah oh, dude aim down sights penalty huh so i have this shotgun currently are you telling me that i can I can aim down sights faster with this shotgun now. Does threat detector work when you're not holding it? I'm I'm pretty sure or I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way. God, I wish it worked that way. Fuck. All right. So no distractions because of an exotic change below and the sniper rifle flinch changes in season of the chosen. We wanted to make no distractions a bit more appealing op a bit more appealing option for com uh, combating flinch. Reduce trigger time from 1.5 to 1 second and increase flinch reduction from 30 to 35 percent. I, oh man, I just, I could not give a shit about this change. I still think no distractions is hot dog shit and I just, I could, I, I don't care at all. Uh, whatever. Uh, celerity and bottomless grief. We addressed these specifically in an earlier toy out, but here are the buffs again. Note that we buffed the perks themselves, so these changes will apply to your existing drops of these weapons. These being alternate perks on adept weapons can't be applied retroactively, though. 
Celerity now always grants 20, plus 20 to handling and plus 20 to reload in addition to triggered effect. Okay. 20 handling, huh? So let me see. I have, where's, where's that fucking weapon? I always lose it. Ah, oh, don't tell me I fucking erased it. Please tell me I didn't erase it. Here it is. So I have uh, Igne Igneous Hammer with Outlaw and Celerity. Are you telling me that I'm getting a bump on, in handling, increasing it to <laughs> 72 handling, and then I'm getting a plus reload, even though I already have Outlaw, that one's kind of whatever's. This is gonna be a lot of fun to use. I'm, I'm hoping it's gonna be a lot of fun to use because I'm basically getting really high handling, which is already gonna be really good. And the reload is gonna be really good if I'm not getting headshots, so we'll see. And then for the next one, Bottomless Grief now always grants plus 30 to the magazine in addition to the triggered effect. This one I'm really excited for as well because I have a swarm with Bottomless Grief and I forget the other one because I currently can't find it. Okay, so I have one with Bottomless Grief and Dragonfly. Are you telling me I'm getting more magazine on this? Because this already has 51 ammo. Like, which is, like, whatever, honestly, for a, like, for for an LMG that's pretty low. But are you telling me I'm going to get more than that? I'm, I'm excited. Just because these are changes that are, like, actually going to feel like a change. And then Thresh... This change is already live and not a buff so much as a bug fix. Thresh unintentionally only worked in PvP for certain weapons in Beyond Light, but Thresh has worked for all weapon types in PvP since Season of the Chosen launched. Cool. Cool, I guess. But now we're going to get into mods. Adept Mag Adept Targeting. Same reasoning as the Iron Banner perks. We were cautious initially, but think it's fine to reduce the penalties for these perks, having seen them in action. Reduced secondary stat penalty from 20 to 15. Fixed Adept Mag and Nagranti reserves when applied to a sword. Okay. Adept Counterbalance. This didn't feel like enough of an upgrade over standard counterbalance stock to be worthwhile. Increased recoil direction benefit. Okay. Exotics. Might have multi-tool. We've seen many requests to switch this from Outlaw to something more useful. And one thing we've observed is Mida losing fights to to weapons that cause more flinch. So here we go. Change the catalyst perk from outlaw to no distractions. Hawk Moon. Increased priority of paracausal charge and paracausal shot buff techs. This was sometimes dropping off the bottom of the list. So no distractions on Mida is I don't know man. Doesn't no distraction go away after one shot? I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. I know it's in uh, Izanagi, but I ignore that as much as I can because I hate that fucking thing. But yeah, we'll see. All right. The future. Some Sometime further in season 14, we expect to touch the following. All shotguns. We don't expect to change... We, we didn't we don't expect the change to the two dominant shotguns replacing quick draw with surplus and nerfing quick draw to really move the needle on shotgun usage overall in pvp we agree with some of the comments that weapon usage is not only dependent on tuning but that but that web that oh my god but that map design is also a factor however we want to we want more weapons to be viable on all maps and we, oh my god this is stupid and we can achieve this through tuning, giving other special weapons rooms to excel specifics coming later. So this is a stupid take because they literally even say, we agree that map, the map design is a factor. It's like, no, it's not just a factor. Map design is literally what almost pushes you to use a weapon. If you're playing a big map, you're gonna play some, you're gonna use something like that isn't a shotgun or isn't a, an SMG just because why would you do that like why would you go into a big map knowing that you're gonna get killed by a scout rifle list any anything that is farther reaching than a shotgun an SMG or a sidearm unless like you can you can like fill that gap between you and the enemy really fast there's there's no reason for you to do that now if you give me a small map like a majority of destiny 2's maps because they took out all of the big maps and just gave us all of the de the destiny 2 vanilla maps why are you really expecting people to not use shotguns when there's corridors everywhere 
bro just give us more maps big like it's cr we'll talk about that later so dead man's tail with the upcoming nerf to 120 hand cannon range we expect to see a surge in dead man tail usage which is already high we had enough moving pieces in season 14 that we didn't want to try to squeeze this in time in the same time but we have a change ready to go that reigns in its ability to challenge sniper rifles 120 hand cannons and scout rifles while in hit fire without detracting the fantasy of the weapon so i'm completely okay with dead man's tail getting nerfed because this shit is obscenely powerful right now and if you tell me it's not you're a liar because it's ridiculous some of the sh like i most likely will have put up a video of me just using that gun right now and it's ridiculous like it's super ridiculous it's so stupid like i love the weapon i love that you can basically shoot it like how the weapon like it's it's like from one of those old cowboy movies where you just shoot and hit fire it's cool i just don't think it should be that fucking crazy in pvp i'm just asking like maybe i don't know make it make it like for each headshot you get you increase it to where it is now so like have it have it have a ramp up time or something i don't know or just do that for pvp and in pve leave it the same it doesn't have to be changed it's good as is i do understand people are going to be like oh but i i would have to remember two ways to play that gun is it really that hard guy like is it really that hard just to remember this gun plays this different i don't know man i just i don't want dead man's tail to just get nerfed and be forgotten but at the same time shit's too powerful right now and then fusion rifles as with some of our other changes we don't want to bump these too much too fast so we'll follow up if needed and that's pretty much your twab i there's other things here but i i, I don't care i really don't care like they talk about the guardian game rewards which i don't even know what the fuck they're talking about there are no rewards uh, <clears throat> oh i think they're talking about the bungee rewards from like oh, okay i didn't even read that I, I just saw guardian games rewards so the guardian game bungee rewards I don't even know why they call it rewards. You still have to pay for all this shit. So, okay. And then weekly known issues. Uh, I'm just, dude, there's just a bunch of stuff. So that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I am pretty excited for some of these changes. Uh, mostly for the linear fusion rifle, which does affect the, the exotics as well, which makes me extremely happy because sleeper as you all know is the highest of dog shit weapons right now and hopefully this brings it up to actually be usable so i'm really happy that they didn't like just say no never mind so hopefully we do that but yeah let me know your thoughts on comments below Are you guys excited for next season hopefully next tab we get to see what the name is and a little bit more because <clears throat> we're almost like at the actually tomorrow's like the last day of april homie show me something cool so yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you guys want to follow me on my social media i'll link in the description below thank you everyone for the support we hit a thousand subscribers i will be making a thank you video and just other things so i will see you guys later